is a Hoki Chica beach. This is the west coast of New Zealand. I'm in New Zealand right now. Uh, we landed uh, two days ago actually already. All right, touchdown in Christchurch this time. Two, 2 a.m. At Christchurch Airport, we had a night at, uh, at the airport hotel. Go and sleep in capsules. Capsules, you know. <laughs> the fantastic sleep, not. We took a camper van. Nope. Fully completed. So, yes. Uh, in here you have a guide for this specific type of camper van. And we is Shina, my daughter and myself. So we traveled a long way. I got a map here with me. So, take a look where we are and where we came from. So we went from Christchurch over here, all the way to Arthur's Pass over here. And we're now here at this beach. So we have to go all the way to the Franz Josef Glacier, to the Fox Glacier, to somewhere Queenstown. Well, this part of the trip is part of my trip to New Zealand and Australia for Coms Connect. I'm visiting Tate Communications headquarters in a few days. So in other words, it's just fantastic. We had cactus weather over the last few days. It's better right now. This is, I would say, magic. Except those tourists in the background. <laughs> Probably it's a good idea to uh, not put up a drone here. It's, it's even not allowed, to be honest. With all of the helicopters flying around here, definitely not a good idea. You don't want to get caught by the police. And speaking about the police, I spoke to uh, an official from the New Zealand police during Coms Connect. We spoke about a few topics. One of the topics is the topic about his relationship with Tate and the benefits of that, but also what the company could do better. So when we talk about development in critical communications, you should be on top of that. Um, yes, you know, I mean, uh, with the, the technology, you know, moving forward, you know, it's, it's very important to, you know, uh, have, you know, good understanding of, you know, the technology that, you know, yes. uh, today. And, yes. and that's what we're seeing here at Coms Connect? Of course, yes. Lots so, of developments no, no, going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you have a you have kind of a special relationship with Tate Communications, is it? Um, well, you know, we started uh, our relationship in uh, back in uh, 1999. When we did the Tetra, you know, small Tetra uh, network for one of the events in Auckland, and then we decided to go for a P25. And um, after that, you know, what uh, what happened was, you know, we selected Tate as a strategic partner for the radio, and uh, we develop our network um, from there. Yeah. Okay. So, so how important is that relationship? Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, uh, one of the one of the things you know I can I can say is uh, uh, when we develop our P25 network for the Auckland, Wellington, and Canterbury, we had the requirement for crossband solution where you know where you don't have the UHF coverage, we get the vehicle to you know relate to you know UHF. Um, that was done very very efficiently and you know to meet our requirement. So they use you as a test bed also as oh, well, right? Course, it's from both course. sides. Yeah, it's from both sides. Definitely, definitely. You know, I mean, you know, there are a lot of things that we are doing. We are you know feeding to you know their uh, research and development from the place uh, the requirements, mm -hmm. and then um, they deliver you know what we want. When you look at new technologies, when you look at the future of critical communications, um, what changes do you see going on? Well, you know, that's a, that's a very good question because uh, when we started looking at our new strategy, going for, you know, mission critical broadband PTT, um, uh, Tate is mainly, you know, focusing on narrowband technologies, uh, DMI and P25, and um, when we started our journey for the mission critical broadband PTT services, mm -hmm. not only for the voice, the voice, video and your know, data, uh, we started talking to each other and um, Tate was very 
very good at you know accommodating us mm -hmm. and uh, looking at our requirements and they came up with this um, uh, unified vehicle concept so th do you think that's the way to go forward oh i think enough because you know the mission critical broadband is not yet matured enough for us to you know switch off the narrowband network uh, we need to have a hybrid uh, solution in new zealand because of the terrain Mm -hmm. We can't, you know, cover whole of New Zealand with broadband. Exactly. So I think, you know, going forward, next, I think, you know, people like to say, you know, it is five to six years. But uh, in my view, you know, next ten years, you know, we will have the broad uh, narrowband, you know, network operating in New Zealand. But there must be also some challenging situations, right? There are, you know, some other uh, things that, you know, that I requested them to, you know, uh, deliver. Mm -hmm. And it uh, took you know more than what I expected, yeah. like uh, uh, some of the uh, the conventional uh, solution that I would like them to you know put in place. Yeah. And uh, but you know they are they are working uh, hard to you know deliver it. It's about setting expectations yeah, and right. managing expectations, that's, that's right? right? Yeah, and yeah, if yeah. you have a clear path, yeah. then you know exactly what you're up to. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean uh, always you know with any company you know you will find that. Wherever you go, with every end user you speak, there are always things that can be improved. returning the, uh, the camper van to the, uh, to the station here. It's half past nine in the morning. Next up is the hotel, stay there for two days, and today is an important day. Today is the day that I'm going to visit Tate Communications, just around the corner. I have arrived at the headquarters of Tate Communications. Finally. So and actually the most interesting thing about this office is that it's really earthquake proof. In Christchurch they had an earthquake, it destroyed a lot of the housing actually, a lot of the offices in the city centre of Christchurch. And this building, as it has been built in 2015, is earthquake proof. 400 people are working here, there are some main offices there, and there is a manufacturing facility over there, canteen over here, entrance over there, uh, everything well thought, just near the airport. What else do you want? We put a little museum in that building that um, looks like where we started in the centre of town, so oh, it's right. sort of a... Um, okay, so we're yeah. going to go to the museum, right? We're going to go okay. to the museum. By the way, this is Trevor, one of the trustees of Tate Communications, and uh, he's going to show me around the museum, actually. I was on the board of Tate as a, um, uh, effectively as the technical director for 13, 14 years, and yes. when I became a trustee, so I'm, I'm one of the few voting trustees, so my role is to effectively protect the founder's legacy. And to do that, I get to hire and fire the board. Okay. So the first it's person I fired job, right? was myself <laughs> <laughs> to, to remove a conflict of interests, right? That, that I can imagine, yes. Uh, we've got such good relationships with our sort of like customers like New Zealand Police mm -hmm. and Fire that they give us permission to um, try things out, right? They're, they're, willing, they're willing to be serial number one. Yes. And they're willing for, you know, to co-collaborate around uh, new product and solution offers okay. and... Okay, we're going here. So, come out here. so if there's anything about Tate from the past, we're in the right location, isn't Correct. it? Yeah. This is the heritage of Sir Angus Tate. That's right. So, and it's a bit of a timeline, if you like. So, 1948 was when the, what we call the first company, AM Tate Limited, was formed. 
and these are the radios being used at that time? Correct, yeah. Yeah. 880s, 81s, 82s, all, all valve, all AM, you know, typically um, 25, 50 kilohertz AM uh, products. Typically, when I started at Tate, we were still building AM. We'd moved to solid state, but uh, AM, AM survived in New Zealand um, you know, well into the early 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, and then that band was repurposed for FM broadcast. So 88 to 108 megs in New Zealand for many years was used for radio telephone. Because, okay. of course, in those days, there was no cellular. So if you wanted yeah. mobile communications, yeah, and that's how we described ourselves in those days. Um, you know, we were a radio telephone company. Sir Angus Tate, radio pioneer, innovative businessman, dedicated manager and mentor, humble, hardworking and loyal. AM Tate Limited, the M stood for Angus's middle name, Macmillan, developed the T4 radio, which contributed to much of the company's success. So what do we see on the ceiling? Because that's... Right. See, it's schematics. It's schematics, right? Yeah. From, that, from that time, from that period. Yeah, so when I started with Tate, we were still hand drawing all our schematics. We were, um, you know, I remember as a young lad, um, you know, designing the circuit boards with Bishop graphics tape and donuts and scalpels on, on mylar paper. This product here um, is one of mine. So the T2000, um, so this was the 500,000th um, one that came off the production line. Uh, they, they weren't normally silver. <laughs> <laughs> that one got silver plated because it was number 500,000. So we talked about sort of the old company going through to 68 and the new one starting in 69. And they were the first employees of the new company. Most of them, of course, worked for the old company. These were the first employees of the, okay. Yeah. This guy here, Ian Gardner, still works here part-time. He was in at work today. You just become part of the family here and it's, it, it, it's more than just a company, right? There is a, Angus, Angus was not in business to make money. Angus was in business to employ people and to show the world that electronics could be done out of New Zealand. You know, if you knew Angus, incredibly modest man, you know, not a cent of money went into his back pocket, it all went back into the company. He lived in a very modest house about a kilometre away from here. Um, you know, it was all about um, uh, reinvesting in the company, which is why, um, you know, it, today it's owned by, by, by trusts, right? And, and my mission as a trustee is to um, you know, look after that legacy 